Hello everybody, I'm Mayako Kisa and welcome to Sports Japan. So as always, we'll bring you the best stories from the exciting world of Japanese sports and martial arts. Today we have two special guests. First, let's welcome karate expert Nicholas Pettis. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's All good right. to be back. Right. Yeah. So you've been here in Japan ever since you're 18. Yep. To learn karate, and you've been spreading Japanese culture to the world for yeah. us through martial arts. Yeah. I've and been this pretty is, fortunate to do that. Right. And this is your program, nice to meet you. Sunrise Spirit yes. on NHK. Yes. And wow, you're. That is Kendall. Kendall. That was the first part of the series that we did at Samurai Spirit, and uh, wow. I've never done Kendall. <laughs> and uh, they just put me in there and had me, you know, do a, a actual real fight against some of the uh, the university students. And um, wow. This was a lot harder than I first expected, unfortunately. Look at your expression. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> it looked like you didn't know what was going on. I had no idea what was going on. I didn't even know the rules, you know. Right. So what happened right there was uh, a strike towards the head, mm -hmm. and you're supposed to say "min" okay. as you attack the head, and then get an ippon. What what happened there? So, yeah, it was it was <laughs> it was really embarrassing. All right, so let's get started with focus. So we're gonna be taking a look at kendo. You need more lessons, nice. of course. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, what was your biggest impression you got? Well, the biggest kendo? impression of kendo is obviously, I mean, it's a fighting sport, mm -hmm. but you know, I had to hold something like a bamboo sword in my hand and right. fight with that as an extension of my body. Normally, when we fight in karate, we use our hands and feet, so the mm -hmm. distance is different. You know, the timing is different. Right. Everything was different. But it was, um, it was really interesting because when you really break it down and get into what the fighting is all about, it's about human versus human Ooh. so uh yeah right. there's a lot of similarities going on there okay so let's take a look at how to score an ippon one of kendo's core skills kenjutsu is a form of japanese sword fighting developed by samurai around the 10th century it began as a means to kill enemies but over time evolved from a pure form of attack into a wider practice encompassing spiritual elements. Truly strong swordsmen were those who grew as a person while developing their skills. This spiritually evolved form of Kenjutsu became the basis for Kendo. In Kendo, there are four ways of scoring an Ippon, a strike which gains one full point. Men is a strike to the helmet, Kote is a strike to the wrist. Do is a strike to the side of the torso. Finally, Tsuki is a thrust to the throat. Kendo is a martial art born from the unique culture of Japan. But now it is gradually taking root around the world. Wow, it's difficult to score an Ippon, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's really <laughs> hard and they are fast, I'll tell you that. Right, okay, so let's welcome today's second guest and learn more about Kendo. Alexander Bennett from New Zealand. Hey, how are you? Nice to see Great you. To yes, have nice you. to see you again. You're a seventh Don in Kendo. Yes, that's right. And is an associate professor at Kansai University as well and you're a coach for the New Zealand Kendo team. Yep, that's right. <gasps> wow. I actually, I actually interviewed Alex uh, on the Samurai Spirit Show. Mm. And he is an expert on, on Kendo. Wow. Wow. Still a long way to go though, there's no end to it. How did you get involved in Kendo? Well, I actually started when I was a high school student. I came to Japan for one year mm -hmm. uh, on, a, on a, a high school exchange. And just by pure chance, I joined the Kendo Club. I'd never seen it before, didn't know what right. it was, and just got well and truly hooked on it. Wow. So it's a bit like Nicholas really, came at pretty much the same age, mm -hmm. I was 17, and that's what's kept me here all these years. Okay, mm. wow. So, Alex, can you explain to me what Ippon is, actually? Yeah. Well, Ippon, for, for anybody who's never done Kendo before, trying to explain the rules is really difficult. Like in, in fencing, it's just a matter of touching your opponent and the light goes on. But in Kendo, you've got these four right. conditions, mm -hmm. uh, vigorous spirit and vocalization, uh, correct posture, uh, accurate contact on one of the target areas with the upper end of the blade, and continued physical and psychological alertness. These are the four things that you've got to have okay. uh, to make an Ippon. I still don't really understand, so I have an <laughs> opponent for you, Alex. Oh, cool. Maybe you can oh, show awesome. us Excellent. what it is. 
Okay. Well, first of all, we start by bowing to each other. Okay. Right? And then we go into the on guard position. Now, the first uh, condition is you've got to have a uh, vigorous spirit and vocalization. Okay. So if I was to strike like that, that wouldn't mm -hmm. be counted because it's not, I'm not vocalizing the point and there's no real spirit behind it. So when I strike, I make a, a vocalization, I shout out the name of the target, in this case, men. Oh, like that nice okay. big loud voice and my whole spirit and feeling is going straight into right. that into that cut, right? That was a big difference. Ne was, next uh, point is, uh, is the posture. Posture. Right, posture is really important. Like, um, you know, kendo is very athletic, but we've got to strike with correct posture all the time. So we can't be striking like this, off balanced or, or around okay, here like no that. No jumping or no okay, bending. Perfectly straight, nice posture. Okay, straight in. Man! Okay, and see I'm upright and straight like this. Mm -hmm. The next point is, uh, this is really difficult, but you've got to strike the target with the correct part of the shinai. This is called a shinai. And the, uh, the bit that we want to strike with is called the mono uchi, which is here. It's like in baseball, they have a sweet spot on the yeah, bat. Yes, Same sort yeah. of thing. So this mono uchi has got to land on the, <coughs> on the target accurately. So it can't be like that. That's too deep. Mm. This is too shallow. Also, this is supposed to be a Japanese sword. This string called the tsuru is the back of the blade okay. and this is the, the front of the blade. So this is what you want to be cutting with. So if I strike like that with the back of the blade, then obviously this is you know not actually cutting right. or the side. It's got to be with the blade area, with the correct part. You've got to be the right angle. It's That's right, be. the right angle as well, like, a, like an actual blade mm. cutting through. And then finally, um, even though we've made the point or the cut accurately with the right part of, this, uh, of the shinai, with full spirit, that's only half of it, because after that we've got to show what is called zanshin, which is uh, continued physical and psychological alertness. Mm -hmm. That means that even though you've made the attack, right. um, you've got to be aware that your opponent might counterattack you. So in kendo, you would never do this. Bam! Oh yeah, I scored. Yeah, I scored like I won, right? I won, because <laughs> my opponent's going to come and hit me from behind. Wow. Okay, so we've got to keep that, that alertness going all the time. So if you put it all together, it's something like this. Yeah! And all of that makes one point. And wow. it's all got to come together. Just as that. Wow. <laughs> Really complicated. Isn't it? Yeah, so you could obviously understand my frustration when they just put me in there, right? <laughs> you need all the small, yeah. small details. They do. It's called Ki Ken Tai Ichi. So that's the Ki, the spirit, the Ken's the sword, the Tai is the body, all coming together to make wow. that one point. And that is all done within a split second. Second. Yeah, that's amazing speed and everything. Wow. So now we're going to be taking a look at the All Japan Kendo Championships, which were held last month, earlier this month, yep. actually. Yep. And you were there, of course. Yes, every year I go there. This is right. like the primo kendo event. Even though we have the World Championships, it's the All Japan Championships that really uh, show the, you know, the best uh, kendo kan in the, in the world. You know, it's a really amazing event. So it means wow. a lot. It to does. Are there any foreigners competing there, or is no, it just for Japanese? Just for Japanese. Oh, just Japanese. Nice. Okay, so let's go to the Japan National Championships and see two of the strongest kendoka in the world. The All Japan Kendo Championships are held annually at the Nippon Budokan, the spiritual home of Japanese martial arts. This year, the tournament was being held for the 60th time. <laughs> The tournament's most prominent contender was Susumu Takanabe, winner of the previous two titles. He was aiming to become the first kendoka ever to win three years in a row. Takanabe favors a particular attacking style. He often wins by men, a strike to the helmet. After preparing to strike, Takanabe can land a blow in just 0.1 seconds, faster than any other living swordsman. At this year's championships, Takanabe advances steadily, defeating all his opponents with strikes to the helmet.
Takanabe makes it to the semifinal. Waiting for him is an extremely tough opponent. Daiki Kiwada often wins by kote, a strike to the wrist. He's won five of his six bouts with this technique. The semifinal gets underway. For Takanabe, still on course to become champion for the third time in a row, it's his biggest test so far. At the start of the match, both men are cautious, waiting for their opponent to make a move. As the semifinal progresses, Takanabe, wearing the white ribbon on the left, looks to score with his trademark attack, targeting the helmet. However, Kiwada, in the red ribbon, uses clever footwork to keep his distance, and Takanabe can't line up a point-winning charge. After six minutes, the match really gets going. Kiwada goes for the helmet instead of his usual attack to the wrist. The two swordsmen have now been in combat for more than seven and a half minutes. For the sixth time in this tournament, Kiwada strikes the kote. Takanabe, one point away from defeat, tries to level the score by striking Kiwada's helmet. But despite his repeated attacks, Kiwada always finds a way to block him. Takanabe's dreams of an unprecedented third straight tournament victory are broken at the semi final stage. Kiwata tries to stay focused in the final after a long, tough match. Daiki Kiwata wins with a kote technique for the seventh time and becomes the All Japan Champion for the first time ever. <laughs> Oh my god, did you see that? 0.1 second and it's all over. I know. That is just so fast. And did you know that these matches, mm -hmm. right, when they get up to the semifinal level, they go for 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Like, I mean, and that's like, you know, we're talking two people, yeah. you know, in an intense situation for 10 minutes, right. trying to find some Lovely. little yes, thing, right? As soon as you let your guard down, bang. Wow. That's it, it seems so like hours and hours, right? Well, Ooh. to get to that 0 0.1 <laughs> second within 10 minutes, you know, that's, it took him almost more than eight minutes, right? To yeah, get that's up to right. That point. Just, um, okay. Saw that moment and bang, that's wow. it. And he take, seizes the uh, opportunity and right. wins the match. Okay, so let's go in details and analyze the semifinal mm -hmm. match between uh, Takanabe and Kiwada. First, let's consider why Takanabe couldn't win. So Alex, why did Takanabe lose? 
Why did he lose? Well, uh, simply because <laughs> he was beaten by his opponent. Right. Uh, basically, he, he, uh, he was uh, a split second of doubt, doubt and hesitation. Bang! And his opponent was able to capitalise on that because of what he'd been waiting for the whole time, that, that moment to attack. Okay. And I just happened to have a sword here. Okay, so can you show <laughs> ah. us what went on? Okay. Over here, sir. Okay. Well, what is this? What is this? So, mm -hmm. to the uh, people who've never really experienced kendo before, it just looks like they're running around uh, just tapping swords. But what we're actually doing at this point is we're trying to control the distance and also yes. the opponent's centre. Because if you control your opponent's centre, even though it doesn't look like we've got the centre here, okay, I've got the centre on, on Nicholas right now. So if I move in like this, you notice that I'm able to make contact with the target, but his is completely off right. target, right? So this tapping of the, sh uh, the shinai or the swords is not just randomly trying to hit. It's moving, taking control of the centre, tr trying to knock them off balance, ah, okay? Geez. Uh, physically <laughs> and mentally as well. Let me just let me just jump in there. You see, if, and you don't understand this if you don't actually hold the sword here. What just right. happened is when I actually try and force against it, he flicks around and gets <gasps> the other center on the other side. Ooh. Ooh, this guy's good. So <laughs> the important thing is to control the center, right? Control the center and try and create openings in your opponent's defenses. That's in his, uh, what they call kamai or fighting stance, mm -hmm. and also in his mind by making him scared or afraid. Uh, or surprised, or doubtful, or hesitating. Okay, and that's what we're doing at this point here. And as soon as we see an opening, okay, as soon as there's an opening, that's when we can go in and strike. Ooh. Okay. Wow. So where are you looking at? Are you looking at his eyes? Uh, or always I was looking at the sword. Eyes. <laughs> okay. You've got to look at the eyes. You, you're supposed to look at the eyes. Yeah, because I mean, like they say the eyes are the the window to the soul, and I'm trying right. to work out what he's thinking. What did you see? <laughs> Fear. Fear. There we go. Okay, so next. Let's take a look at how Kiwada won the match by Kote, right? It was yep, a Kote. That's right. Okay. Okay, okay so how did he win by Kote? Well, um, demonstration again. Well, you see, he, he was very, uh, very clever in the way that he took the match to his opponent uh, because he's such a tall guy. Mm -hmm. um, most people think that he's going to use that height advantage to strike over the top and strike their man. And he showed that a couple of times, as we saw, by going striking man and the opponent blocked. Okay, okay so then he kept applying pressure and more pressure and more pressure and it builds up and then he goes for man again. Okay, so he's planting a seed in his mind. And then he's just about to do it again. The opponent's thinking, oh, he's going to come for man. What am I going to do? He goes up and then he goes, bah, strikes Kote. Ooh. Okay, so he coaxed him into making that movement, took advantage of his unset uh, situation and capitalised, scored the point. So that's how he won. So it wasn't <laughs> random, it's, it's completely built up and it's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. Yeah. You do realise <laughs> that these bamboo swords actually represent real samurai katanas, right? Right. The samurai yes. swords, right? So if I had actually been fighting with uh, Alex right now, my handle would have been chopped off. <laughs> You're correct. Yeah. Oh my God, that was uh, really smooth. That's the only word I could really use for that, smooth. Yeah, you know? mm. these guys are you know, so professional, so fast. It's over in a split second, so yeah. it's amazing. Right. So what's going inside your mind when you're having the match? Well, you're, you're trying to keep uh, a placid state of mind. Mm -hmm. um, you're trying to keep calm, but you're also trying to put pressure on your opponent all the time. And you're like a spring, ready to you know, leap forward into the attack, but you've got to time it perfectly. And once you go, it's what they call STEMI, where you completely throw your whole body and mind into it. So it's just a, it's just building up like a volcano. Volcano. And then, bam, it explodes. Okay. Yeah. Alex, um, when I interviewed you previously, um, you told me about the, the four weaknesses of the heart or something. Right, Can yep. Yeah, well, what, what's uh, the four weaknesses of the heart? They call it shikai. And, shikai. And what it is, it's a surprise, it's doubt, it's fear, and it's hesitation. Mm. And when you're you know, facing your opponent, and you're looking in their eyes, and you're, you're trying to sort of make them move or coax them into doing something, you, by putting pressure on them, you're trying to draw out of them one of these uh, psychological weaknesses. And as soon as one of these weaknesses like hesitation comes mm -hmm. out, bah, that's your chance to attack, that's your right? Chance. But at the same time, you're trying to get rid of these shikai or these, right. uh, these weaknesses in your own mind as well, because your opponent can capitalize on that as well. 
So that's why, you know, by training your mind mm -hmm. uh, and your body through kendo, it's not only useful for winning in matches like mm. we've just seen, but uh, and not only in the dojo, but in your everyday life. life. Right. And funny thing about kendo and with the other martial arts is as you get older, you actually get stronger. Wow. Because of that, that mental side. And um, yeah, we understand is... that, yeah, so you actually Alex, do a magazine about this, right? This is your magazine, yeah, oh, right? Yeah, Kendo World. We've been doing that for 10 years. Wow. We've, we put it's it out. It's all in uh, English. That's right, in English. We put it out twice a year. Uh, you can check the internet for Kendo World, and we, we talk about the history, the culture, the philosophy of Kendo, not only as a sport, but as a way of life. And it has DVDs attached Ooh. to it sometimes also. This magazine is really uh, full of useful information, and not just about, you know, Kendo as a sport, but um, also about Kendo as, you know, we just talked about the four weaknesses of the heart and yeah, everything. Yeah, well, as a philosophy for really your life. That's right. That's right. As Japanese, I want to thank you for spreading Kendo to the world for us. Well, thank you very much. It's such a wonderful culture. Right. Thank you so much for joining us today, Thank Alex. you very much thank for having you. me. It was a great pleasure. Thank you. Okay, so now it's time for front runners. This week we feature sumo wrestler Masunoyama. At 22, he's the youngest of all the Makunochi wrestlers and is expected to have a promising future. Twenty-two-year-old sumo wrestler Masunoyama loves to sing karaoke with his stablemates. In the sumo ring, Masunoyama gets serious. He specializes in pushing techniques. He uses his huge 180 kilogram bulk to shove opponents out of the ring. Many have tipped him to have a successful career. Speed on the power. There is good reason behind Masunoyama's insistence on a fast attacking style. During long training sessions, he starts to breathe very heavily. The stable master interrupts and tells him to rest. Masunoyama struggles for breath, meaning he can only fight for short periods. Masunoyama is currently having regular checkups to try and find the cause of his breathing problems. Today, he's having a heart checkup. <laughs> His oxygen intake is measured during exercise. The higher the rate, the greater the endurance. The results show his oxygen intake capacity is less than half an average man. スポーツ It's possible that Masunoyama's body may not be getting enough oxygen. そうですよね。多分本当に瞬間、瞬間的にっていうかね、短時間で勝負をつけないと、きついんだと思うんですよ。もう力に物を言わせてやるっていうような感じじゃないと。ね。はい。ま、しょうがないです。そうそう、もっ
Masanoyama competed at the July tournament. With his lightning fast sumo, Masanoyama wins 11 of his 15 bouts. The average length of each victory is 5.1 seconds. As a reward for his positive attacking style, Masunoyama received the Fighting Spirit Prize for the first time in his career. Masunoyama, a wrestler who defies the odds with his courage and self-belief. Incredible. Oh my god. <laughs> Did you see those guys just bashing into each other right. like that? Oh, there's a lot of determination in there. Right. And I've tried sumo, so I know how hard and how strong these guys are. Right. That is just incredible. Mm -hmm. He can't have, you know, long matches, right? Yeah, well, you know. I mean, everyone's got their weaknesses, but for him, it's his heart, you know, and if he can't breathe properly, you know, he has to finish the match faster. Right. And that creates an atmosphere for him to create a whole special sumo, mm -hmm. you know. So his style is obviously to be super aggressive. Right, and he's yeah. got to be focused. Yeah. Just like uh, Kendo that we Kendo, covered. Kendo, yeah. Yes. It takes like what, 0 0.1 second to mm -hmm. finish a match. Oh my God. But um, what can I say? I mean, uh, this guy here with a bad heart, obviously he found a way and, you know, amongst all those things and said, well, this is what he's got to focus on. Mm. In, in, a, in a sense, it's easier for him because right. he knows what he has to do, mm. you know, he has to finish the match so fast. Right, that's his style. Yeah. Oh, well, wow. in Kendo, it takes him like you know, seven, eight, maybe 10 minutes, you mm -hmm. know, before they get to that split second. And that is a lot of focus. Mm -hmm. So, what thank did you, you learn today? A lot. <laughs> I found out that I thought I knew Kendo, but uh -huh. I actually didn't know Kendo. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe we should try next time. Yeah, we should cover more of uh, the Japanese martial arts. Definitely. Right. So please, yeah. please come back again. Yes. Thank you very much for having me right. again. Thank you for joining us. So thank you everybody for watching, and we'll see you next time.